so y'all know, know that I was meaning to do like a testimonial uh, what did I drop in there hopefully nothing important did I drop something in there that was important I didn't see I only saw your hand do this. I'll be right back. Anyway, <laughs> so I was meaning to do a testimonial video about how I came to Jesus. Now, I did a little tiny one a long time ago. <sighs> but that one, unfortunately, got deleted along with all the other videos from my Christian uh, YouTube channel, because, you know, YouTube doesn't like Christianity, apparently. Anyway. So, what happened was, as y'all know, for a very, very long time, uh, about 23 years to be exact, I was... Pagan and then New Age. So in the beginning, it kind of started with my mom doing some witchcraft when I was younger. And then I kind of got interested in it. And she went to Christ and then she kind of like burned and threw everything out. I found a couple of things and I kept them hidden. And then I dabbled in it since then. Uh, as I was growing up. Uh, I started realizing that certain things couldn't have been a coincidence for me, right? Like, uh, for instance, before the internet was like a huge thing and every household could have it, poor people like me and my family couldn't afford it. So we didn't have internet. We didn't even have a computer. So I couldn't have known about runes or anything like that. But I made up a language when I was about... 13 years old. I called it Dallas. Later I would find out that that was a Hebrew letter. Didn't know that. Anyway, so Dallas was made up of rune characters and I would write in it all day long, every day. When I did get the internet, when it was like finally available for even poor people like me and my family, around 2008-2009 no before that it was like 2006 or 2007 when it was available for anybody um my friend showed me online where i could find out what runes were because he's like i didn't know you knew about runes i'm like what are you talking about and he said this this is runes. And I was like, no, that's Dallas, my language I made up when I was 13. He's like, it's not made up. And I'm like, what? And then he showed me on my computer because I had a computer. And I was shocked. I was like, wow, like that couldn't have been a coincidence. The other thing is my favorite numbers is three, six, and nine. And those are the numbers that make up the universe. I didn't know that, that either at the time. Those were my favorite numbers since I was little. Actually, I have an OCD about number three, and now I'm trying to break that OCD by using fours and sevens. Anyway. And twelves, even though it's a denomination of three. Anyway, um, you know. Anyway, uh, so then after that, for so many years, I was singing goddess songs, chanting, blah, blah, blah. I got really, really into it. Eventually, I found out through a sexual assault that I couldn't get pregnant. And it completely shattered my world. I wanted to have children. Like I, This is the weirdest thing. While being pagan, I still wanted to be a traditional woman. I wanted to find a husband. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, work from home, raise my kids, and I wanted a lot of kids. Um, but then I found out I couldn't have kids. Devastated me. Uh, so I started doing 
rituals and spells. And eventually, one worked. And I got pregnant with my first son. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, in 2008, I got pregnant, but um, the baby didn't survive. And then I got pregnant with Logan after I did the same ritual and spell again. And I got pregnant with Logan and then he was born. And then I did the same ritual and spell again and I got pregnant, but I had another miscarriage. And then I did the same ritual and spell again and I got pregnant with my son, Lucas. And then I had Lucas. And then I did the same ritual and spell again because I wanted a third child, but I found out that after I gave birth to Lucas, they removed my tubes because I almost had a heart attack. So they believed it was a health risk for me to have a child. So they decided to do an emergency procedure to prevent me from having children to save my life. How does that make any sense that they forcibly removed my tubes without my knowledge? I don't know, but apparently that's a thing. So after that happened, I just tried my best to move on with life, knowing that I probably would never have another child. Then that's when I started delving into spirituality and new age. So during this time, all the way up, I was pretty feminist this whole time. Um, I didn't cook or clean too much. I did a little bit, but not too much. I didn't go overboard with it. And I never made sure that Johnny had a plate of food waiting for him when he got home. Basically, when he would get home, he could just make his own food. Um, I also, we also argued a lot during this time, like every single weekend and every other day, we would argue a lot. It was pretty bad. It got to the point where um, I thought we were going to break up. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, so... After all that, lots of other things I won't get into. I'm just trying to st strictly stick to the points of how I got to where I am now. Um, this is when things started getting really strange. So when I started delving into spirituality, like doing yoga and meditation and tarot cards and uh, what else? I did chants, uh, like Hindu chanting. Um, well, uh, what else did I do? Um, I started delving into alchemy and other things, like lots of occult things. And it got to the point where I was trying to open up all the chakras. I was actually working on uh, awakening my kundalini at the time. I wanted to so badly. And the way that people described their kundalini awakening I never experienced it and I was like oh I thought I did but I didn't never not even once and I guess that's a blessing because <laughs> now that I know I wouldn't have wanted that <laughs> but um anyway so I was working on my chakras uh mostly it happened because I had a surgery to get my gallbladder removed because I had gallbladder stones and during the surgery I went somewhere I, I think I died and I went somewhere. Um, the place that I went was very like brightly colored with pinks and orange and yellows and it was just warm and loving and all I felt was love and warmth and comfort and I didn't want to leave. Um, but I remember remembering my kids. I almost forgot about them. Uh, but then I remembered them and I chose to come back knowing I would be in a lot of pain and I didn't care. I came back because I wanted to. Um, huh? When, when you were in a beautiful place, was it heaven? I have no idea. I really don't know to this day where I went. But I know that wherever I went, I didn't want to leave. And I came back because I didn't want to leave you guys. I knew I'd be in a lot of pain and I didn't care. So I came back and as soon as I did, all I seen was darkness and pain. And that's all I felt when I woke up from the surgery. 
after that, I started delving into yoga chakras, like heavily and trying to awaken them. I meditated every single day. If you guys go through my Facebook, you guys would see all the meditations I did every single morning before bringing my son to school. I would do a meditate, like I would do meditation chakra work. People made fun of me. I didn't give a crap. Um, and then eventually when I got renovicted from the place I was at where I learned how to eat solids again because I stopped being able to eat solids and there's a spiritual meaning to that which you'll find out later in my discussion about this that I figured why that that happened to me uh, so after we were renovicted I ended up at a, another beautiful place that had a garden area and I started growing like veggies and whatnot. And um, that's where things started getting really strange, like picking up stranger than usual. Like it was strange at first when I would like have what they called, uh, what was it? Um, DNA awakening symptoms, which was like heart palpitations, shaking, chills, headaches, migraines. Oh man, the migraines were so bad. I hated them. And so every day I would check the Shroomen re resonance of the earth, which is the vibration of the earth. And every time it was elevated, even a little bit, I'd get a headache. Or if there was um, a solar flare coming from the sun, I'd get a headache. Or actually, it was more like body chills, pain, and headache when there was a solar flare. And so this went on for like months. And then I found a YouTube channel called Higher Realms, Higher Realm, Higher Realm Holistics. And it's uh, done by a woman named Lady V. Although she goes by the White Queen now. Lady, uh, white lady queen or something like that um anyway so i followed her i did rituals with her when she would do her live rituals on youtube i would do them with her and i experienced things like it's so hard to explain um this one time we were jumping timelines and we were staring at a picture that she had on her laptop and we were chanting and she was chanting. And then all of a sudden I was in that timeline for it, it, like probably in reality it was a split second, but it felt more like an hour, like I was there. And then it was horrible, that timeline. Like there was collapsed buildings. It looked like a third world country, but it was America. I was in America, okay? And there was like papers flying down the street. There was ash coming from the sky. It was the worst timeline I've ever seen. And so we collapsed it. So that would never happen. Although I feel like it's probably going to happen anyway. Because the way the world is going right now, you know, like there's a civil war this close. So anyway, um, so we collapsed that timeline. And then we came back and it felt like an hour to me but on the video it was only a minute and I was like wow that, that's a crazy and then she asked us what did you experience and I said I felt like I was gone for an hour but it was literally a minute and she's like that happens you'll experience that a lot more blah 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 and then I started having dreams where I'm jumping timelines where I'm there was this one where at night we had to hide we couldn't have any lights on and there was like this tiny little candle in this apartment that was boarded. Everything was boarded. There was nothing in the room, though. I had the two kids with me, Logan and Lucas, my sister Tandy, my sister Kaylee, um, a childhood friend named Chris, my husband, Johnny. And for some reason, the dream was around me still being in love with my childhood friend. Um, although I didn't want to be with him. Just hold on one second, Logan. 
And um, so we were supposed to scrounge for resources and food each day. And so I would have to leave a cat because for some reason, whatever was chasing people at night was scared of cats. So I summoned a cat and a cat came and the cat stayed with my sisters and the boys while me, Johnny and Chris went out looking for food. Now, when you went out onto the street, it was like that timeline I was in for an hour. There was papers all over the place. But when you look down, it was actually protest, uh, like posters. There was like fists on one. There was words on another. Stop something. And then um, they were ripped in half, of course. And there was like two by fours that had paper attached to them upside down. So you couldn't see what was on them. But it was definitely protest posters, right? There was money flying down the street. Useless. Um, there And the lights, the street lights were dangling and just falling off. Deserted. The, the world was deserted, it looked like. And it was just, everything was boarded up. Everything. So you'd have to like break through the boarded up buildings to look for things anyway so I'd wake up from these dreams and they were different each time um this one uh when I woke up I had bruises and cuts I had a cut here on my head um I had bruises on my arms I woke up one day with a dislocated finger and my wrist was sprained like this happened, that these things really happened. I have videos of them all over. Uh, well, it's not Namu Sea Holistics anymore because that's what I was going to call my YouTube channel um, in my business because I was actually going to become an energy healer. I was taking a course for it. Um, uh, but they're all on my, well, it's now Proverbs 31, Woman 31. That's my new uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but if you scroll back in time, you'll see all those like timeline jump last night and things of that nature. Um, I'll post the link to my um, YouTube channel so you can check those old videos out from last year. Um, what else? I woke up one day with a sprained ankle from a timeline jump and just so many different things happened eventually though when I started doing the rituals so the first ritual I ever did was um called uh what was it rose flame ritual uh it was in May last year the very first one um it was for mother wounds so I wanted to heal my mother wounds the second one was the Golden Ray ritual. Uh, and, and of course, these were embodiments. So you would have to embody this ray of light. So the first one was Rose Flame Ray. And you would embody it. And then the Golden the golden Ray Light embody it. And then it went through like the whole rainbow. There was Rose, Gold, Blue Ray, uh, Emerald Flame ruby ray uh and then what was the last one uh amethyst or what was it violet flame and then the very 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 last one you would have to combine all of them together and embody the white diamond ray so once you did that uh you would go through now Around Blue Ray was when I started hearing voices in my head, these spirit guides and my ascended masters that were assigned to me, things of this nature. They told me that after I embody the white flame, I would go through a purification for one year. So the first, I had to detox from any tox, tox, toxic food substance or chemical that was in my body before the new year they said it was essential before the new year 
So in December, I went through a huge detox from a narcotic that I was on uh, for my mental illness. And um, so I had to go through a huge detox. It was so painful. There was nothing worse than that. The three weeks that I went through that was the worst. Then the new year came and I already knew what was coming. I had these dreams. I had these visions all throughout last year from, I think it was May when it started to about November. I had these weird freaking visions of apocalypse, of fire. Like, okay, so this is the weirdest thing. So last year I would get messages from like clouds at first. That's how the voices started. They were messages in the clouds in the form of runes and then actual images. And I saw four different places on fire, four different places. And it wasn't like a wildfire. No, it was like, um, it was purposeful. It was like a protest, I suppose, because this year, that's exactly what happened. Four different places had fires. Four different major cities had fires, burning down buildings, smoke pluming up in the air. And that's exactly what I saw in the sky last year in May. Scariest thing in the world to see your visions come true. Anyway, so I saw that. And then I also saw a plague in June last year. I saw people reaching up. They were on the ground. They were reaching up for help. And people were kicking their hands away. And they were dying. I saw it. I knew what was coming in 2020. I was told, right? By these entities. I also saw a, a spaceship um, coming through the sky. And a military... Uh, convoy on the ground and a military jet following it chasing it and it crashed into the ground although it wasn't it it wasn't because they were shooting at it but it was purposeful it did it on purpose it came down and crashed into the ground on purpose because it was leaving something in the ground so it put something in the ground before the military got to the the spaceship whatever it planted in the ground I was told it would awaken every single person on the planet just by looking at the whatever it was right i'm getting i'm shaking because knowing what i know now i know that this was demons talking to me now demons demons were telling me all this stuff i'm shaking because it's horrible that i know i know now that it wasn't angels or it wasn't ascended masters it wasn't like good people it was demons deceiving me manipulating me eventually they would tell me that i was an earth angel and that i was sent by god to come here to help people awaken to their true selves and or heal people the normies i would have to heal the normies with energy so I went through this whole thing. I finally got to embody all the Rainbow Ray. All of them. I combined them together just before the winter equinox. And I embodied the white flame. I went through the detox. Uh, I didn't make it to one year, clearly. <laughs> I was supposed to do the ritual again this year on December, whatever. And then I would be five-dimensional earth angel here on this plane I'd embody the whole entire thing and I'd be who I'm supposed to be now I didn't know until like I was saved in February and found a YouTube channel that explained everything that I went through and why it was made that way and what would have happened if I had have went through with the whole thing I wouldn't have been embodying an earth angel soul from a past life on a different planet somewhere else in the universe i would have been embodying a demon i would have been possessed i would have allowed it to happen and it would have been integrated into me to the point where i wouldn't have been able to get it out it would have been integrated to my soul 
So I'm glad that didn't happen. So around May last year, uh, when I was meditating, I started hearing something or someone saying, find out the truth about Jesus. Well, I ignored it for two months. Um, but I started getting like angel and demon dreams plaguing me every single night and they only escalated. And then I got to the point where I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to ask this entity what I'm supposed to be looking for. So in a meditation, I was like, what am I looking for? The person or thing said, read the Bible. I was like, no, I'm not reading no Bible. No, hell no. I was like, that's not happening, right? Um, but then, you know, I was plagued by these dreams and they were terrifying. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy a couple of Bibles because I knew that they were all different versions. And I didn't want to get like confused. So I bought three different versions, the Catholic version, the NIV version, and the King James version which I still have somewhere. Uh, I also had a Jehovah Witness version and a Mormon version that I got over the years because they would come to my house, right? So I had those. So I compared all of those <laughs> and I started reading from the beginning, clearly, in about November. I didn't start before then. When I started in November reading the Bible, the voices my spirit guides were telling me don't do it don't do it or they were like twisting what i was reading and they were like see that's evil why would a why would god want to want murder to want to murder people or convince people that uh to torture their, his people just so that he could kill them because in one of the versions of the bible it literally said god turn the pharaoh's heart dark so that he would not let his people go so he would be forced to make him let his people go so it made it sound like god forced the pharaoh to become evil so that he could defeat him and i felt strange about knowing that because these entities were saying that's evil why would a God want to do that? He's supposed to be loving and all powerful and blah, 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 blah. Right? And I was like, yeah, you're right. That That's totally evil. So I started like highlighting things that I felt were evil, right? Sorry, my alarm went off and then it cut me off. Anyway, so I started highlighting things that I thought were evil. And then it got to the point where these entities that were talking to me um, started like I don't know, they had me doing other rituals too, so that I was consumed, so I wasn't reading the Bible as much. Well, we were um, forced to move again because of issues with my landlord harassing me. She assaulted me one morning. She would stomp all morning long, wake up my kids and scare the crap out of them. So we ended up having to move. We moved here. Uh, in December so I did the last ritual where I embodied the white flame here and then um, after that happened and I detoxed around January ish area I started reading the Bible more uh, as I was supposed to just be fasting for like what was it three weeks I was supposed to drink water and juice and eat only uh, organic beets and something. It was something weird. I was supposed to be on for three weeks um, to flush my system from any toxic toxins that were left over from when I completely stopped consuming toxic stuff in December. And then the voices were like ringing my ear constantly. This one and I was like talking to them all the time. Uh, even during the day, like when I would have like a problem, I'd be like wondering, what am I supposed to do with something like this? And then I'll, all of a sudden I would hear, so this is how you're gonna deal with that. They would direct me, right? Guide me. Every morning I wake up, they would say, okay, so 
this is what's going on in astrological chart today. You need this, 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 this crystals, right? Um, wear this amulet. This will help you with that, blah, blah, blah. Um, they would guide me through the day. And I would write all this stuff down. I had a journal for all of this stuff that they were telling me and whatnot. And so around the end of January was when I was like, something's not right. Like, why am I hearing voices? This sounds insane. Like, I started thinking that because I was reading the Bible more. And in the Bible, these spirits would come to these women that were called oracles. And they would do the same thing to them. Hey, Lucas. Good morning, buddy. I'll be right back. So, uh, the end of January was when I started thinking that none of this is normal. It can't be normal. And so, I started looking more into, like, Christian uh, YouTube channels. I wanted to look and find out, has people turned away from, like, you know, new age or spiritualism and what happened and why. And then I found a lot of good videos from, done from people that went through exactly what I went through. And then they said that they realized somehow, mostly they said that Jesus spoke to them and said that, you know, you can't be doing this. These are demons. They're not friendly angels. Angels don't come to you unless they're directed by God and God does not direct them to go and talk into your head to you to do things. So, it's even stated in the Bible that that, that, that just simply does not happen. So, um, again, at this point, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't cleaning around the house. I was stuck in my room. I was isolated. And um, all I did was sit in there all day, reading, watching videos, doing rituals, writing down what I needed to write down that I was told to write down. I was literally caged in my room. So then uh, the beginning of February started coming. And this was when I started feeling a little more Christian than I did spiritual, you know. And I said one day after, um, I think it was like two weeks, I was cooking and cleaning and just being regular um, godly wife. Uh, I said to Johnny, <laughs> I was like, so I want to go to church. And he's like, okay, sign a church, we'll go. I was like, that's it? Really? You're, you're not like surprised or mad? He's like, no, actually I'm excited. I haven't been to church since I was a kid. I was like, okay then. So I found a church and we went on February 9th. That was our first day there. I was nervous and scared. And to be honest, when I went in, my spirit guides were screaming in my head the whole time. Get out, get out, get out. You should leave. You, you're in, you can't be in there. Nope, this is evil. You're, you're going against God. You're going against what God wants you to do. Blah, 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 blah. They were trying to convince me and I started having a panic attack in the middle of service. And I had to take one of my Ativans because it was getting pretty bad. I couldn't breathe. I started feeling like I was choking. Johnny was holding my hand. And that's when I realized angels wouldn't act like that in the house of God. I realized, why, what were they afraid of? If it, if it was truly an evil building and the Bible is fake and not real, what's so scary about it to them, right? So then I started testing the spirits, so to speak. I read the Bible. They would give me headaches and make me nauseous to the point where I would have to stop reading sometimes. But one of the times that it happened, I pushed through. I was like, if I'm gonna throw up, I'm gonna throw up, whatever. I'm gonna read this Bible. And I read, the Bible, a whole book all the way through that night. 
I do believe it was Exodus. I read all of Exodus all the way through. So, then I stopped being nauseous and having headaches when I would read the Bible. Then, February 10th, I was going in for a baptism consultation. I wanted to be baptized. And so, I talked to the pastor, and we talked for a long time. Me, him, and his wife, Johnny. And, uh that's when I knew I need to be a Christian there's something wrong right there right there and then that's when I knew I needed to be a Christian so that morning actually I knew it because I woke up that morning and I was like what what is wrong with my life like these voices in my head I was like I need them gone I don't want to hear them anymore. I picked up all the crystals, all the things that were in my room that were ritualistic. I still have a few things I have to get rid of. Um, mostly it's because there's like no opportunity to get rid of them. They're big items, they're furniture. So we're gonna to have to do it one weekend, we're just gonna to have to bring them to a Salvation Army or something and just dump it there. But anyway, I got rid of everything. Books, I cried, you guys, I cried. There's, there's videos on YouTube of me crying over what I did. I cried, it was painful and hard, it was horrible. It was the worst feeling in the world to throw it out because this was my life, right? I felt like I was throwing away an identity of myself. I was at the point where I started feeling like if I didn't do this, I was going to lose my sanity or something else. I was going to lose myself because I was not myself. Not at all. So I threw out everything. Bracelets, necklaces, earrings, you name it. If it was part of whatever I was doing, occultic, yeah. ritualistic, whatever, I threw it out, all of it, everything. It was, if I had to tally up how much it cost for all of that stuff, over 23 years worth of stuff, yeah, 23 years, 23 years worth of stuff, it was like almost 100 grand, all of it, 100 grand. Crystals alone were at least 15 grand. <laughs> I had 15 grand worth of crystals. Jewelry was another 10 grand. Books. <sighs> Guys, I had tons of books. I had books. I had boxes of books that I throw. Boxes. Why do you have books so much? Because I'm a reader. I love books. Now I have a whole bunch of new books. Well, not a whole bunch. I have like one shelf worth of books now that are Christian based. But anyway, they didn't go away right away, the, the voices. In fact, they woke me up in the middle of the night for uh, the first two months after I begged for forgiveness and was actually saved on February 10th. Uh, they would wake me up in the middle of the night. I start sweating, feeling like I did something wrong. Oh my God, I, I'm on the wrong path, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd come to my senses because Johnny would hold my hand through it while I was shaking and crying from the guilt. He would hold my hand and I would just, he would say, you need to tell Jesus to take it away. And I would beg Jesus, take this away. Take these thoughts out of my head. Please help me, help me, help me. And then I'd fall back to sleep. Um, around May, <laughs> um, the voices completely stopped. Then it was just a r ear ringing once in a while. And um, I still get the ear ringings, but they're not all the time and constant like they were. Uh, I get them mostly when um, I'm talking about 
when I was delving into that stuff. Mm -hmm. I hear it then. Um, and I know that they're just, you know, they're trying their best to make me feel like they're the good guys, right? Like, I'll get an earring and I'll understand what it means. It means, like, sometimes it's, we'll forgive you. Just denounce God. Throw away your Bibles. No. Nope. I'm actually diving harder into my Bible recently. Uh, since I'm not sick anymore. I was sick for two months. Sick for two months. March to June. Two whole months. I was sick. Middle of March to the middle of June. It was horrible. Oh no, May. No, I was till June, basically. Because I had pneumonia in March. And then I had bronchitis after that. And I just got over it in the middle of June. Literally. So, maybe three months? I don't know. I can't do math right now. Anyway, so... I, uh, I was sick for that long. I think that was when I was going through the detox. Um, the full detox of occult spiritualism. My body was just flushing it out, I believe. Now, this is the meaning I got from me not being able to eat. So when I started doing yoga and meditations, that's when I stopped being able to eat. All of a sudden, I lost a lot of weight, yes. And I did beg to lose weight to my gods and goddesses. I begged. And I do believe that they answered my prayers through making me not being able to eat. Now, I was told it was because of my anxiety, because I choked on food. But I also feel like it was another, there's another reason for it. When I started believing in God again, um, in Jesus, one night when we were doing Bible study, we were talking about like certain things that happen in our lives for certain reasons is always going to be that higher purpose for whatever's happening. And I noticed this throughout the whole Bible that this is true because David and Goliath, for instance, David was a freaking child and he beat this Goliath guy, right? Then he was chased around by uh, King Saul and King Saul wanted to kill him, right? He wanted to kill this kid because he knew he would be the next king. And he didn't want David to be king. So he tried to kill him. Uh... And then eventually David would become king and Saul would, you know, concede and whatnot. Anyway, so this had to happen, right? His life had to be terrible. He had to hide in caves and, and like gross places just to survive until he could be king. Or until Saul stopped hunting him. Anyway... So then I started thinking about other things like Jesus suffering. So much he suffered. Every single person that God used in the Bible had to suffer, right? And I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm special or anything like that. I'm not saying that I'm going to be some great thing God picked. No, I'm simply saying that people suffer, right? Um, but those who suffer through it with faith seem to get rewarded more or better I should say like Job we all know that story right Job poor Job um but yeah so I feel like me not being able to eat was so that when I started faithfully and consistently believing without little pangs of doubt from the ringing of my ears and these things talking to me constantly, once they're gone, like once they're really, really gone, and I just focus and focus and focus and focus on God and Jesus, I do believe I'll be able to eat again. I'm seeing signs of it now. 
things that would bother me, like chunks that would scare the crap out of me if they were in food, don't scare me anymore. I can handle chunks. I can handle thick things now. Like before, it would have to be like near water. But now I can handle thick soup. I can handle chunks in soup. I can handle syrup with little tiny strawberry seeds in them. Strawberry syrup with tiny little strawberry seeds in them. I can even handle coffee grounds in my coffee if it's in there sometimes. I have complete faith that once I have complete faith, <laughs> I will be able to eat again. But this is my testimony. And I know some of it is very hard to believe. Very hard to believe. But these things did happen. These things did happen to me. And these things were scary. And they were not normal. And I don't feel like they were normal, which is why I turned away. Thankfully, before I actually embody the freaking demon that I would have been embodying, rather than an angel like I thought. I'm so glad. I turned away in time. This is the dangers of new age and um, occult, occultic teachings, secret knowledge and all this stuff. I have been in a group about the deception and they go through it so much more uh, clearer. There's more clarity, coherency and it makes a lot more sense. The person I was watching on YouTube that did most of the work for me was probably Alexandra. I know that there's a whole controversy of, controversy around her because of her Jewish roots. That's fine. I just use discernment when I'm when I'm listening to what she's um, saying. I don't call God Yahweh. Um, I don't call Jesus Yeshua. I know for a fact that the the Jewish language now is not the Jewish language of Jesus' time. Jesus spoke Greek. And I know many other things thanks to my education on the matter. And so I use discernment when it comes to people um, talking about their faith. I use discernment, right? So with her, I try my best not to get caught up in the terminology. I only look for information and I use, I pray on it to know whether or not some of it's true or not. And a lot of it's true. As she says about a lot of it, uh, for instance, Q is a false prophet for sure. I don't know how Trump plays into this, but I think that Trump is the one who introduces the Antichrist or is part of the Antichrist. I, I think it's a system. I don't think it's a one person. I think it's a couple people that make up an idea that is the Antichrist, right? I'd have to do a whole different video about that later, but these are my thoughts. <laughs>